Hi, so for today we are going to continue our discussion about the 1001 Solve Integrals. This is part 7 of our uh, discussion all about the 1001 Solve Integrals. So if you haven't watched uh, the several parts before part 7, please do so. So we are now in number 56. So how do we evaluate this integral? So we have the integral of dx all over x quantity 1 plus x squared. So the, the, this is not in any type of the integration techniques. We cannot use IBP. We cannot use algebraic substitution. We cannot uh, use also trigonometric substitution. Or this is not a yielding inverse trigonometric or hyperbolic because it doesn't have any uh, square roots or the form. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, focus on the 1 plus x squared here. We are going to make uh, this denominator or numerator, I mean, the same as 1 plus x squared. So by algebra, we can rewrite this as we have 1 plus x squared minus x squared dx all over x multiplied by 1 plus x squared. We did this because technically we have 1 here, right? So we did this, x squared minus x squared, that is technically 1 dx. So there is nothing wrong with what we, we, di we did here in our solution. It is still the same. It is still dx on the numerator. That's still equal. So the reason I'm doing that is if we are going to follow, okay, for example, this quantity, we are going to separate them by 1 plus x squared dx all over x 1 plus x squared and then minus we have x squared that by properties of integral all over x 1 plus x squared so as you can see this would cancel and uh, this first term will have a readily integrable what uh integration dx all over x that would be dx all over x and as you can see here also dx will cancel so, leaving us in the numerator as x dx all over 1 plus x squared. So, this is simple natural logarithm. And this second term is simple uh, u substitution. Why? Because we have to let u equals 1 plus x squared. Derivative of u would be 2x dx. And we have x dx. So, I have to isolate x dx on the right side of the equation. And we can now perform u substitution. So we have ln of the absolute value of x. Then we have minus the integral of x dx. x dx equals du all over 2 all over u. So now we have here, let me just continue it here. We have ln of the absolute value of x minus 1 half integral of du all over u which is still an ln we have ln of absolute value of x minus one half ln of the absolute value of u of which u is one plus x squared i'm going to substitute it back so we have one plus x squared plus c so this will be our final answer for this number 56 so we have a long way to go we are only on number 56. I must say, I must, I must say we are only 5% of our goal of creating 1,000, 1,000, solve integrals, 1,000, 1. So, now let's proceed with number 57. 57 is the integral of secant theta, uh, d theta. Okay. So how do we integrate this? This is not, uh, we have seen that there is a, an integral of secant theta d theta. But, but here, we are going to derive how the secant of theta d theta is integrated. So first of all, I'm going to multiply secant theta okay, by secant theta plus tangent of theta all over secant theta plus tangent of theta the, that is technically equal to one okay this is equal to one so it's not there's no harm in doing that because technically that is equal to one so if i'm going to distribute this so we have secant squared theta plus secant theta tangent 
of theta all over secant theta plus tangent of theta. D theta. So, how do we integrate it? If you are going to look at it carefully, okay, the denominator is actually, if we let you the denominator, the derivative would be the numerator. So, if we let u equals secant theta plus tangent of theta, that is plus. Plus tangent of theta. The derivative of that, derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta plus the derivative of tangent theta is secant squared theta, which is exactly the numerator. Okay? So, rewriting, we have secant squared theta plus secant theta tangent theta d theta. Okay, of course. So, we can now proceed with the u substitution. We have integral of du all over u. And we know that that, that would be the natural logarithm of absolute value of u plus c, of which our u would be ln or the secant theta plus tangent theta. That would be natural logarithm of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. That would be our answer for this problem. So that's how the integral of secant theta is derived. For number 58 on our list, we have number 58, we have the integral of 3 plus, that is plus, not t, 3 plus sine 4x all over, we have sine 4x. By properties of integral, we can separate this because this is an addition. So we have 3 all over sine of 4x, distribute the integral sine as well as the dx, plus we have sine 4x all over sine 4x, of which this would cancel eventually equal to 1. Okay? So we can factor out 3 outside of the integral sine, then we have 1 all over sine 4x dx, Plus, we have the integral of simply dx, okay, because they cancel. Now, if we are going to recall the reciprocal identity of sine theta equivalent to cosecant theta. So, it means also that cosecant theta is equal to 1 all over sine theta. So, that is the identity we are going to use here because this first term of the integral is not readily integrable. The, 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 the formulas that we have discussed is not actually would not actually solve this so we have to make this readily integrable by substituting the property or the identity the the right identity for this trigonometric function that is cosecant 4x dx plus integral of dx and we know that the integral of uh, cosecant would actually produce to what a negative uh ln of cosecant plus cotangent so but before that we have to let you cosecant 4x okay and then we know that okay i'm sorry we have to let you the 4x not the cosecant so we have the 4x the du would be a uh, 4dx and i only have dx here so, you have du all over 4 and then we have dx. So, if I'm going to substitute it 3 integral of the cosecant of u and then we have dx as du all over 4 plus the integral of dx. So, I can factor out 1 fourth that this becomes 3 fourth and then cosecant of u du plus integral of dx. And again, the integral of cosecant of u is very simple. So, we have 3 fourths then we have negative uh, negative ln of cosecant u plus cotangent u. Okay? Then plus integral of dx is x plus c. So, we have negative 3 fourths ln okay, of well, we can, we can include absolute value. Okay? Or we can just simply put parenthesis. Cosecant of u plus cotangent of u plus x plus c. And returning back to its original variable, the u, 
we have 4x. So, we have to substitute it back. Negative 3 fourth ln cosecant of 4x plus cotangent of 4x plus x plus c. So, this will be our final answer for the said problem. Okay? Okay, for number 59, second to the last problem that we have today, 59, the integral of cosine x minus tangent of x, then we have dx all over cosine of x. So, the very first thing that we're going to do is to separate the integrals because it is a difference. Okay, so probably, most probably, you can see that this would cancel. So, you have the integral of simply, um, uh, this is cosine squared, I mean. I don't, we have a wrong given, I'm sorry. This is cosine squared x, this is cosine squared x. Okay, so as you can see, still, this would cancel one cosine, okay, or, I'm so sorry, <laughs> this should be, the, the squared should be on the denominator. I'm so sorry. Cosine squared x. So, so cosine x, cosine squared x. So as you can see, this would cancel out. So we have dx all over cosine of x. And then minus, uh, we have this tangent of x all over cosine squared x. Uh, cosine squared x, of course, here. So we can... Um, transpose or replace tangent x with the identity sine of x cosine of x. So we have sine of x cosine of x all over cosine of squared x dx. So simplifying first the second term that we have, we have integral of sine of x all over cosine of x then multiply, then get the reciprocal so that would be the x all over cosine of x minus the integral of sine of x all over cosine cube of x the dx okay so use identity again one all over cosine or the, the reciprocal identity of cosine is secant so we secant of x one all over cosine of x so we can replace this first term as the integral of secant of x dx, of which we have solved a while ago. So this one, I can bring up uh, the cosine cube by negating ex its exponent. So we have cosine raised to negative 3 x sine of x dx. Why did I do that? It's because we are going to let you the cosine. Okay? And then the derivative cosine is negative sine of x. So the integral of secant of x, we have seen that a while ago, that should be ln of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x. While here, we can use, on the second term, we can let u equals cosine raised to negative 3x. Or, yeah, that should be our uh, u. What I mean is cosine x only, not e excluding the sign, uh, the exponent. So you have du negative sine of x dx, of which we only have sine of x dx, so I have to eliminate negative by multiplying both sides by negative 1. So this becomes sine of x dx. So now we can simply substitute. So you have minus, our cosine of x is u, but it's raised to negative 3. And then we have sine of x dx as negative du. So I can factor out the negative sign, the negative sign here. This becomes plus. Then we have what? Integral of u raised to negative 3 du. So that would be simple power formula. So this becomes u raised to negative 2 all over negative 2 plus c. So we have ln of secant of x plus tangent of x and then we have negative one half okay 
And of course, we have cosine raised to negative 2x. Our u is cosine. Since it's raised to negative 2, we have a negative 2 here. Plus x. Okay. So if we try to simplify our answer, the reciprocal identity, we have negative 1 all over 2 cosine squared x plus c. Okay. Again, the reciprocal identity will tell us 1 all over cosine squared would be actually secant squared. Oh, this becomes 1 half secant squared x. Again, 1 all over cosine squared x equals secant squared x by reciprocal identity. So we have now our final answer as this. And for our last number, we have for last for number 60, we have the integral of the hyperbolic tangent of 2x dx. So how do we do that? Again, we have already an identity again that this can be hyperbolic sine of 2x all over cosine, hyperbolic cosine 2x dx. Okay? And now this is pretty easy because we can now let u, the denominator, the hyperbolic cosine of 2x, then get the derivative. The, hy the derivative of the hyperbolic cosine is sine, positive hyperbolic sine. So positive hyperbolic sine 2x and then differentiate whatever is the inside function in the hyperbolic. The derivative of 2x is 2. So we have du equals 2 hyperbolic sine of 2x dx. Okay? That is our u substitution. And of course, we already have hyperbolic sine of 2x dx on our numerator. So this is simple uh, simple as u substitution. So I can uh, isolate that as du all over 2 and then we have hyperbolic sine of 2x dx. So that would be what? A du all over 2 all over u. Okay? So we can factor out 1 half integral of du all over u. So that is ln, 1 half ln of the absolute value of u plus c. But u is hyperbolic cosine of 2x. So we have 1 half natural logarithm of the hyperbolic cosine of 2x plus c. So this will be our final answer for this uh, problem. Okay? So again, thank you so much guys for listening. Again, this is Injir Abat. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and have a great day.